Hello, gorgeous. Welcome to HG Radio, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration. Here is your co-founder and host, Kim Becker. Hello, gorgeous, and thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and this is Hello, Gorgeous, everything beauty, cancer, and inspiration on Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. This episode is brought to you by Amplified Marketing Group. They specialize in affordable mobile solutions that will get you noticed and help you retain customers. Check them out at www.applified.marketing. Our guest today is Becky Branch. Once upon a time, Becky would have referred to herself as a naive pastor's kid from Canada with a boring life except for her bad case of acne. But over time, adulthood replaced that boring life with one full of battles, some seen and some not seen, but all leaving their mark one way or the other. Becky is a one-year cancer, breast cancer survivor who also lived with multiple sclerosis for the past five years. More importantly, she is the mother of four amazing teenagers, three of whom all live with autoimmune diseases. Being a single mom for the majority of their upbringing due to an abusive, uncontrollable circumstances, she is acutely aware of the toll that various battles of survival have taken on each one of them. While incredibly difficult, it has brought all of them to be tuned into the importance of conversing regularly about mental health and supporting each other when nobody else really gets it. Believing strongly that God is the only reason that they are all still standing, she has watched a process in her life that she refers to as battles becoming beauty. Each time she has found herself in yet another battle, she has always eventually seen the beauty of a relationship, of peace, of God's timing and protection, and even the literal beauty as, as the ugliest of all circumstances have turned into the most wonderful opportunities. Becky, Becky desperately wants others to understand, and women especially, that they are not alone. There is hope for their future, and they are treasured no matter what. And you have been brought through physically, emotionally, mentally, and you are beautiful. Hi, Becky, and welcome to the show. Thanks, Kim. I'm so excited to have you here. You are such an incredible individual and such an inspiration. And, you know, I had the opportunity to meet you in person earlier this year. And Mm -hmm. just looking at you, I would never have any, I just wouldn't have any inclination that you have gone through everything that you've gone through. You carry yourself so well. And everything that you've been through would be very easy for you to take on the poor me individual that but you don't I mean you just exude happiness so I'm so excited for you to be here and to share your story and and to inspire our listeners so thank you well yeah well thanks for having me and you know um there there certainly have been days where I've I've sat there and said poor me I mean don't (laughs) uh don't get me wrong because and and I and I actually think that's an important part of working through each of these you know, battles, um, and seasons that we go through is, is letting yourself feel that way sometimes, um, or letting, you know, in my case, letting my kids feel that way sometimes too. But, um, you know, overall, um, it, it's God for, uh, that has really helped me to, to kind of be who I am and be able to deal with, with things, um, the way I've been able to deal with them. So, so what do you, so I, I think about that, um, mm-hmm. you know, when I, when I lost Michael, it was trying to keep myself up, but then trying to make sure that my son would stay up and, and we found a pattern. And so I'm curious yeah. to know if you've discovered this, we, um, Trisha, my sister had noticed that if I had a bad day, two or three days later, Seth would have a bad day. Mm-hmm. And so we all, we always knew that it was coming, you know, and I tried yeah. to hide it yeah. and keep it. Do you guys notice a pattern like that too? Like if you are mentally having a bad day and you pull yourself out of it, then one of the kids kind of have that too? Are you guys on the same cycle, so to speak, where if one's having it, you guys are all misery loves company kind of thing. Everybody, you do it all at one time and then you just get through it and you move on. I mean, there's a certain element to um, misery loves company. And, and, and so there were some times where like when I um, got my cancer diagnosis, we all kind of sat in it together um, for sure for a time, you know, and then other things it's, it is where, um, you know, as a parent, I'm, I'm kind of, okay, I need to be quote a strong one. You know, I need to set the example of how to admit that this affects me, 
but not let it overcome me. And so, um, so you do that and you kind of find a, a private space to um, do the crying and the, and the woe is me type of a thing. But I've got four kids. And so, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not necessarily a cycle like you and your son had. Um, if it was, I didn't really notice because it would just be kind of constant, like a Ferris wheel. I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, you know, know, let me off, let me uh, off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there are times, you know, I, I have to just give my kids so much credit because I really tried hard to not let any of these things, you know, whether it's my health issues, their health issues, a lot of the other things that we went through, um, I did not want it to force them to lose their childhood, to lose their teen experiences. But at the same time, it does shape you. It does cause you to kind of grow up in certain ways or mature. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, And so in that regard, you know, there were days where I was having a bad day and they were the ones that really lifted me up. So it, it goes both ways. You know that. I mean, yes. you know, there are times that, that your son is going to be your encourager and your cheerleader. So yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So tell me about your, tell me about your medical journey. So you were diagnosed with MS and then a year, it'll be a year in December that you were diagnosed with breast cancer. Actually, it'll be two years in December that I was diagnosed. Okay. Um, but like, the whole, you know, how long have I been a survivor thing? You know, my treatment was so long. Um, my treatment actually just ended officially not too long ago, just as COVID was starting um, in, you know, the spring of 2020 is when my treatment ended. So, um, but but yes, MS was first. Um, and that was diagnosed, um, I was in a car accident in 2012 so that was kind of it was kind of a fluke thing to most people to me I looked at it as God kind of setting the stage because an MS diagnosis can be very long and frustrating for me it was kind of a shortened experience thankfully Um, because of that car accident I had an MRI done in my brain and they found uh, lesions and at that point they were kind of like hey you know this isn't a big deal it doesn't look like MS, we'll just kind of keep an eye on stuff, whatever. And so I took them at their word for it. But I, um, it, so it wasn't until several years later then that the, my fatigue level was just like, I mean, even for having four teenagers, it was a little extensive. And then I lost the vision in one of my eyes, um, which now is completely restored. Um, but so, so because they had found that lesion at the time of the car accident, that was able to be kind of my first um, thing on the checklist of diagnosing MS. And then um, the, the vision loss was the second thing, as well as some right, spinal tap and other symptoms and things. So, so um, it was kind of a short process, actually, which ended up being very, very good for me because I was able to start treatment relatively quickly, which has really helped the MS to not progress very much at all. Um, So I'm very thankful for that. Um, And so just a year prior to the MS diagnosis, actually would have been two years prior to that, my son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Um, And then that was in 2014. And then in 2015, three of my four, including my son, they were diagnosed with celiac disease, which is another autoimmune. So we just kind of like boom, 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 several years in a row, always in the fall. Um, (laughs) We were getting these medical diagnoses and it was just kind of like, (laughs) when are we going to get a break, you know? And, and the irony of it is that these, wonderful, well-meaning people just kept, well, at least it's not cancer. Well, at least it's not cancer. (laughs) I probably said that. (laughs) Well, at least it's not cancer. And of course, um, as we've already alluded to, then eventually did come, well, it's cancer. Um, And I had the the breast cancer diagnosis. And, um, you know, how did you, how did you come about that? Was it a lump that you found or did they discover it through a mammogram? 
No, it was a lump that I found. In fact, a mammogram, I don't think, would have uh, picked picked it up, at least in the breast tissue, because the breast tissue was so dense. Um, they probably would have eventually found it because I did have a tumor in my breast, but what what we initially found was a lump under my arm. And because of the MS and because um, my lymph nodes at certain times would kind of get angry and swollen and then, you know, they would start hitting themselves on their own, I was just going to ignore this. Um, the, a month previously, under my other arm, I had, had an angry lymph node and it, it went away on its own. So I just assumed that this was the same thing. And, um, you know, I'd even looked up um, how to tell the difference between a lump you should be worried about and a lump you shouldn't be worried about. And it didn't fit the bill for a lump that I should be worried about. But something in my mom's gut told her to keep nagging me (laughs) to get it checked out. And, of course, my gut agreed eventually. And so I did go get it checked out. And that lump under my arm was a tumor that had um, originated from a tumor in my breast. And that tumor in my lymph node was incredibly aggressive. Uh, It grew a couple centimeters even between the time of finding it and starting treatments. So, um, so yeah, that's how we, we found it. Uh, December 17th of 2018 is when I got the call and I was in treatment by January. So, and what kind of treatment did you have to go through? So my first course of treatment was chemo. Um, I had several months of chemo. The chemo was spread out and given to me a little differently than maybe a typical patient Because of my MS, the symptoms, or I'm sorry, the side effects of the chemo were difficult for me to tolerate, um, partially because of the MS, partially because of the MS treatments that I have. Um, So we were doing every week chemo instead of, you know, every two or three weeks um, and splitting up the various chemo medications. So we we did chemo um, from January until... May of 2019, and then I had surgery. I was able to have just a lumpectomy in my breast with um, any reconstruction that they needed to do was able to be done by that same surgeon, um, as well as the some lymph nodes removed from under my arm. Um, and then I was told that I had a full response to the chemo, the surgery. They took a little more than they originally planned, but they thought they had got it all. But because I had triple positive um, or HER2 positive um, breast cancer, it's just a standard protocol. You will always get six weeks of radiation after surgery, and then you will have um, additional chemo with just one one chemo drug called Herceptin. They mm-hmm. consider it a maintenance chemo. Like I I had gone, um, I had lost my hair from the original chemo treatment. So my hair even started growing back during the maintenance chemo. Um, but after the radiation and the maintenance chemo, um, then I was done. And that actually, like I said, just finished up. Um, I had my last two rounds of Herceptin um, when COVID was was starting to to rear up here in in 2020. So, well, thank goodness you were able to get through that before the midst of, you know, before COVID hit. I think that there are just heightened things, protocols, and and I imagine my anxiety personally yeah. would have been a little bit more heightened due to having to go through treatment. And which yeah. I feel bad for those people because I said, you know, it, it's. Cancer didn't go away through this it whole pandemic. It, it just took a back seat. It's just not front and center. Yeah. 